All right, this is the last recording from chapter 13. Just a few odds and ends here, which are still kind of interesting, at least to somebody like me. Uh, we have the process here uh, called non-disjunction. Uh, non-disjunction occurs when there's a mistake in meiosis so that uh, the chromosomes don't separate when they're supposed to. And you can see it as an illustration from your, from your textbook here. You can see that um, normally what you'd expect to happen is that the uh, tetrads here would have split. You can see in one case, one of the tetrads doesn't split. So as a result, uh, this, this on the right-hand side here only gets one of these chromosomes, but the other side here gets, gets that chromosome plus two more. The result of this is that you get uh, aberrant gametes here. Uh, you can see this, is, this gamete is N plus one, which means it's got the haploid number plus one, and then the other gametes resulting from this direction are, are N, N minus one, so they're, they're actually missing a chromosome. If one of these gametes actually combines with a normal gamete, you end up with a condition known as a trisomy. Tri meaning three, soma meaning body, so three bodies. Uh, if one of these guys ends up fertilizing a regular, a normal gamete, then you end up with a, a monosomy, in which case the organism is actually missing one of the chromosomes. Both these conditions are actually uh, not so good. It is possible for non-disjunction to actually occur in meiosis one, which we just saw, but it could also occur in meiosis two. In other words, in meiosis one, the tetrads split, they go into meiosis two just fine, but then for some reason, uh, the, you can see right here that this particular, um, this particular chromosome didn't split during an anaphase two. So again, the result there is the fact that you get, you get a, 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 a gamete with an extra chromosome or a gamete with minus chromosome. Uh, this isn't quite so bad though, because uh, you can see that this also produces two normal gametes. So again, there's only a 50% 50, 50 here of, 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 of having an aberrant gamete here. Trisomies, where you have uh, three copies of one chromosome, are, are, are not good news. Uh, in general, the trisomies that, that are not lethal are those that affect only the very smallest chromosomes. Uh, let me flip over here to a, uh, here's, here's a karyotype of a, uh, of a uh, trisomy 21, and you can see number 21 here, we've got three copies of this chromosome instead of the normal two. Uh, trisomies in the smaller chromosomes, like 18, 19, up through here, are the ones where people might survive. Obviously, chromosome number number one here is much larger, so therefore it has a, a larger number of, of genes on it. And so trisomies in the, the bigger chromosomes are almost always always fatal. Uh, you can also have monosomies, in which case uh, the organism is is actually missing a whole chromosome. These are almost always lethal, with with a, with a couple of exceptions here. Um, if you're interested in some information on some of these some of these trisomies, um, I've got some links here. Again, you'll have to go uh, up, look at the smart board notes on the website here. You've got the Down Syndrome Society, you've got Edwards Syndrome, which is trisomy uh, 18, and you've got a trisomy 13, which I'm not going to try to pronounce. I don't know how to say that. Uh, there's also some sex chromosome trisomies and monosomies. Uh, there's XXX Syndrome and XXY, XYY, and, and XO. In each of these, you can, here you had non-disjunction in an, um, the, an X, either an X and a male, an X and a female. In uh, XYY syndrome, you can see that you had non-disjunction in the Y chromosome. In Turner syndrome, the zero here actually means that the, the organism is actually missing a chromosome. This is one of the few monosomies that uh, that that isn't lethal. The, the, it does have its pathology and uh, does have its pathology and it, its uh, consequences. Okay, um, here's a chart. I just thought this was kind of interesting, uh, relating the age of the mother to the incidence of Down syndrome, and you can see that up, according to this chart that up to about age 30, the incidence of Down syndrome is, is basically flat. In other words, there is a chance uh, per thousand births, that's like two per thousand. Uh, but then after about age 30, you can see that we have this, this exponential curve going up here. Uh, one, one interesting thing about this is that, that as in these days, as women are waiting to get married and then waiting to have children, um, it's possible that we're gonna see an increase in the number of Down syndrome uh, people simply because of uh, societal mores about when you get married. Um, here's a little question for you though. It, it turns out that having an extra chromosome or missing a chromosome is bad. So if you compare the sex chromosomes in females, so the sex chromosomes in males, either the, the females have an extra chromosome and that should be bad, or the males are essentially missing a chromosome and that should be bad. So, so why doesn't one sex or the other suffer from some sort of genetic disorder? Well, something kind of interesting happens here. It turns out that even though females have two X chromosomes, they don't use both X chromosomes. One of those X chromosomes becomes inactivated. This is called X chromosome inactivation. And the chromosome bars itself up as a bar body. And you can see right there, um, the, one of the X chromosomes actually wads itself up. It's actually not used and it attaches itself to the, to the nuclear envelope. 
Um, now this actually brings up something kind of weird, and that is the fact that if this is your original cell from reproduction, you'll notice that when this divides, uh, which X chromosome actually inactivates is random. So in this particular illustration, what I've done is I've taken the orange X chromosome here and, and inactivated it on this side, and I've taken the black X chromosome on this side and inactivated it, which means that, that in the cells, the cell lines that come from this side, you can see this cell becomes two, becomes four, and so forth. The X, the genes on, on the black X chromosome here are being expressed. And on the right-hand side here, this one cell becomes two, becomes four, and so forth. You can see that the orange cell is, is actually uh, being expressed. Now, what this means is that in, in females, they are not necessarily have the same expression everywhere. In other words, some of their genes, some of their cells are going to actually express one X chromosome. Other cells are going to uh, express the other X chromosome. Now, this, this occurs, uh, there's, a, there's a genetic disorder in women, in which case they, uh, on one of the X chromosomes, they don't, uh, women don't produce sweat glands. And what's interesting about that is because women turn out to be these mosaics of patches of, of, of cells. They did have one X chromosome, the other activated. Um, w women with this disorder will actually sweat in patches. They have little patches that sweat and little patches that don't sweat. Another kind of cool example of this is our uh, calico cats. Well, it turns out, first of all, that calico cats are, unless there's some sort of non-disjunction, calico cats are always female. And there's actually a couple of genes going on here. First of all, there's a gene that either allows pigment or doesn't allow pigment, which is why you get the splotches. But in calico cats, you can see the orange areas are where the, the black, the gene for black fur color has been inactivated, and the black areas are where the gene for orange fur has been inactivated. So, so that's really, that's really kind of cool. It's a macroscopic uh, ex uh, example of, of, uh, of this mosaic nature of, of females. Here's a chart from your uh, text also, which just has some, some other diseases. Some of these we've talked about, some of them we didn't talk about. Uh, uh, cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia, Tay-Sachs disease, phenylketonuria. These guys are all recessive. It gives the frequency here. And then you've got some, um, you've got X-linked. We talked about hemophilia. Uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy is X-linked. Um, you've got a dominant disease gene here, and then the hypercholesteremia, uh, which is another ex excess cholesterol levels that's also dominant. One other uh, mode of inheritance here, which is kind of cool, is this idea of, of mitochondrial inheritance. Um, if you recall, when, when uh, meiosis occurs in egg cells, there's an asymmetrical cytokinesis, so that you get a, a large cell in this tiny little polar body. Well, it turns out that the mitochondria that end up in that cell will be the mitochondria in the in the offspring. In other words, the male, the sperm, does not contribute any mitochondrion. It only contributes DNA, which means all the mitochondria from in, in you and even in me came directly from the mother. So you can see the pattern for mitochondrial inheritance here. Uh, for instance, here's here's the original mom here. Her son got her mitochondria, and her daughter also got her mitochondria. Now the son obviously is only going to con to contribute his uh, his uh, nuclear DNA, so he doesn't pass on his mitochondrial DNA, but notice that the mother passed it on to her daughter, who passed it on to her sons and daughters, and then her daughters passed it on to her sons and daughters. And, and this is kind of a cool thing, because what that means is that in you, since you're female, in you, the mitochondrial DNA in you is, is excluding mutation, is identical to that that's in your mother, and identical to that that's in your mother's mother, your maternal grandmother, and so forth. And it's this direct line of of, uh, of maternal inheritance from mother to daughter, mother to daughter. Of course, it doesn't mean that's the only way it exists. You can see here, we can, we can actually map all this out. Here you can see that the mom here in red passed it on to her daughters and her sons. Um, the, the woman here in blue passed it on to her sons and daughters and so forth. So it does, every woman passes on this line of mitochondrial inheritance. So it's non-nuclear inheritance. All right, the, there's also uh, an inheritance pattern which is uh, for Y-link genes. These are genes that are found on the Y but not found on the X. Uh, the most ominous one being here the SRY gene, the sex-determining region of the Y chromosome. And because the fathers pass their Y chromosome to all their sons, you can see that uh, this is passed from father to son, then this son passes it to his son, and that son passes it to his son, and so forth. Uh, the daughters don't, don't pass this on. So some males have their own, their own version of this also. All right, that ends chapter 13.